Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In our last module, we covered lists with Swift UI. In this module, we are going to be going over how to introduce buttons into our applications. We're going to be adding functionality to them so that when we click on a button, we can make stuff happen. We're going to be covering how to style buttons and customize them and all that good stuff. And as mentioned in the last video, we are going to be going over what exactly this state property wrapper means and why we need it in Swift UI and what it's used for and all that good stuff. So guys, I took the liberty of creating the buttons module already. So you guys can just go ahead and do that now, create a new folder and make a file that says buttons module. And once you do that, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So we're going to see just how easy it is to create a button here. Let's go ahead and just type out button. And you guys will notice that we get a couple different initialization options, right? We can pass in some sort of configuration, some sort of title, and then a plus, provide it with an action, action and a label. So we're just gonna start with this guy first. So I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna be the string protocol and an action, right? So the string, we can just say, click me. And for this action, this is what we wanna happen when we actually click this button. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And what we put inside of these brackets, it's the, is the code that will execute once we tap that button. So this is really cool, right? Now we can actually, actually introduce functionality into our apps with like clickable buttons here. So I'm just gonna say print button clicked. And guys, if I pull up this console down here, this was, I had this uh, there from before, but if you go ahead and click this button, you'll notice that print that print statement shows up beautifully there, right? So we are successfully executing an action with a button that we just created. And it's literally three lines of code. So it doesn't get simpler than that. Okay. So how do we introduce like actual functionality relative to an app, right? Obviously, we're not just going to be printing stuff out when we click buttons. When we click something, we probably want something to happen on the screen, right? So let's go ahead and just create like a rectangle here, guys. So really quickly, I'm just going to comment this out. I want us to create a V stack and let's create a rectangle. And let's go ahead and say dot frame width and height is 200 by 100 dot corner radius is 10. And let's go ahead and give it a foreground color of dot blue. And what we're going to do, guys, is introduce the ability to change the background color of this rectangle when we click a button. So let's go ahead and add our button back to this V stack. Let's go ahead and comment this back in, hit command X to cut it and paste it below our rectangle. So ideally, like I said before, what we want to do is click this button and have this change the color of that rectangle. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And then we're going to break it down. So let's just go up to the top of our file guys. So below the struct declaration, but above the body, and we are going to create a state property here. So I'm going to say at state var rectangle color equals color dot blue. So what we're going to do is instead of passing in this hard coded value of blue, we're going to make our code a little bit more dynamic here and pass in this rectangle color as the foreground color. So now ideally guys, anytime I modify this rectangle color, it will um, change the color of my rectangle to be whatever that is equal to. So it starts out as blue. And if I click this button, I want to modify it to something else. So instead of saying just button clicked, let's just go here and say background color or sorry, rectangle color equals dot pink. And if you guys go ahead and click that button, you'll notice that it changes to pink, which is so cool, right? It's that simple, but there's a lot to unpack here, right? And this is going to get into the ins and outs of how Swift UI works as a declarative programming language. So let's go ahead and talk about what this state property guy is here. So I'm going to pull up a diagram to help us understand this, right? So really quickly, guys, let's just take a look at this. Swift UI views are a function of state. When we modify a state property, the view reconfigures with that updated state. We don't modify views directly. This is the essence of declarative programming. So basically we have some view here and it's a function of state, right? F of S equals V means that our view is some function of state, right? 
So when we modify a state property, we modify the state of our view, and then the view redraws itself with and updates with the modified state. So let's go ahead and break down how that applies to our code here. So right now, we have declared this state property as this rectangle color, right? So our view now knows that it is in some way dependent on this state property because we've passed it in here. So this explains how our view is a function of state, right? So when I modify this state property, it's going to redraw my view and reconfigure it with the updated state. So what exactly does that mean? Here is where I am modifying the state. So it changes this rectangle color. SwiftUI recognizes that some state property has been changed, so it knows that now it needs to redraw the view. So what do I mean by that? Well, guys, literally what SwiftUI does is it throws away the existing state of the view, right? So when it was blue originally, it just takes that and it tosses it. It basically destroys that view. And then it redraws the view with the updated state where the rectangle color is now pink. And that's how we get this pink rectangle here. So this state guy that we see is what's known as a property wrapper, guys. So it's used to create and manage mutable state within a view. It's a fundamental concept that allows you to store and track changes to a value so your view can automatically update whenever that value changes. State is used primarily for managing small amounts of mutable data that are specific to a single view. So I am going to copy and paste this for you guys, just so you have that as notes. And this will be available in the completed source code, guys. Or you could just pause and type that out. So uh, that's just basically an explanation of what state properties are. So once again, guys, this is the essence of how SwiftUI works. All views are a function of state. We do not modify views directly. We simply modify state properties and the view redraws itself with that updated state. So let's do some more examples here, guys. Have some more fun with this stuff so we can get a better understanding of it. So I'm gonna create a uh, text component as well. So I'm gonna say text, hello. And maybe, let's make the, the font of this like dot title. So what we're gonna do, and the reason we're adding this text component, guys, is we're gonna change both the background color and the title of this text when we click on buttons. So let me go ahead and give this button some, uh, or let's give this uh, button some padding just to get some spacing there. Right. So now let's go ahead and create another button, guys. I wanna show you how to create a more custom button. This is a very basic button. Um, we can make our buttons look like whatever the heck we want, which is really cool. We are just gonna select this different option here. So it's gonna be action and label. So if you hit that, it's gonna ask us for the action first. You can just hit enter on that guy and it will expand the brackets for both of those closures. So here, we're gonna leave that blank for now. Let's go ahead and just create this button uh, label. So when we have a label, guys, that means we can create any view component in SwiftUI that we want. So I can make this a text component and I'm gonna call it custom button. I'm gonna say dot font is dot headline. And you guys can see here that I'm already getting some of that customization, whereas here, this is just a, a raw string and it renders that in, with sort of this like default button a look from SwiftUI. Here, we're just gonna keep customizing this guy. We're gonna say dot frame width and height is 360 by 48. Dot background is dot blue. Dot foreground color is dot white. Dot corner radius is 10. Ooh, not contrast, corner radius. So you guys will notice that that is like a really good looking custom button right there, right? Like this is what you might see in an actual mobile application that has some nice design. So let's go ahead and add some functionality to this button, guys. Let's maybe uh, change the rectangle color. Let's maybe make our button purple here. Oop, background is dot purple rectangle color equals dot purple, right? So now I can click this guy and it'll make it purple. I can click this guy and it'll make it pink, right? But let's imagine we wanted to change the text here too. So let's go ahead and make another state property because why are we making a state property, guys? Well, it's because we want something on our view or our screen to change when we click this button. So 
the way things work in Swift UI, you have to do make a state property to do that. So we're going to say state var uh, title. And it's just going to equal a blank string. Or let's make it say hello. So instead of passing in that text right there, what we can do is pass in our title. So now our view is a function of two different state properties, right? This rectangle color, which is right here, and now this title, which we are using right here. So in this, um, this button action here, I can now also change the title text and it will also reconfigure my, my, my view with that updated title text because it's being used as a property right here with that text component. So I could say uh, title equals basic button. So now I click this and it will change both the rectangle color and the text for me now, guys. So I can modify as many state properties I want when I'm clicking on a button. And similarly here, I can say uh, title equals custom button. So now if I click this guy, it changes to custom button in purple. If I click this guy, it changes to basic button in pink. Um, let me guys sh uh, show you guys one more example of another button um, that's like more customizable. We can create another button with an action and a label and just hit enter on action and it will uh, expand both those closures for us. We'll hold off on the action for now. Let's go ahead and see if we can make an image, guys. So we're going to say image, system name, heart, dot circle dot fill and you guys will notice that this is now a clickable button in the form of an image so this is so so cool right we can make our buttons look however we want with any sort of swift ui view component whether it's a text an image an icon anything you want guys any view component can be passed into this label closure here which is so cool and let's go ahead and say dot resizable dot frame width and height of 80 by 80 dot foreground color and let's maybe do like I don't know dot green or let's make it red right um yeah so that looks really cool and now let's just go ahead and copy and paste these two lines of code guys and paste it in here and we can say rectangle color equals red and this guy is now going to equal image button and I can click on this and boom, it does the exact same thing, right? I think you guys get that concept. Um, and this just goes to show you um, how we can introduce buttons into the app with functionality, guys, and how state properties work and a big insight as to how Swift UI works in general, right? So this is a concept a lot of people don't understand and it's something that's glossed over significantly. And that's because it's hard to understand, right? what exactly the state property is and how Swift UI works as a declarative programming interface. And this uh, video, I think, is a great introduction to that. Um, if you guys are still confused and want more information about that, you can simply just Google um, how Swift UI works and what state properties are. But just to do a quick recap before we move on to the next video, guys, in Swift UI, views are a function of state. So anytime we want to modify our view or add some functionality to it or change the way it looks, we introduce these state properties. And then in this case, we are modifying those state properties with buttons. And every time we modify them, the view throws away the existing state and redraws itself with the updated state. And in this case, our state properties are this title and this color. So when we modify them, the components that are dependent on those states, right? In this case, the rectangle is dependent on the rectangle color and the text is dependent on the title component right here, that state guy right there. The view will rejaw itself and reconfigure with those updated state properties so that when I click that button, it modifies the state, the view redraws and gives me back the correct or updated state. Um, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope all that makes sense and we are gonna keep going with some more really awesome Swift UI concepts that are gonna help us introduce more functionality into our apps, right? Up to this point, we've just been doing really pretty user interfaces. Now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of this stuff where we're actually introducing functionality into our apps so that users can actually use them and have the app do something, right? Like that's the core foundation of being an app developer. Apps gotta do stuff. So we're gonna keep going with this and it's gonna be super fun. So get excited for that, guys. We'll see you there. Peace.